Hi students, welcome to Year 12 Chemistry and Module 5, Equilibrium and Acid Reactions. This is video number 15, and we're going to be looking very briefly at ionic solutions and the equilibrium constant. This is very much an introduction because the last section that we look at in equilibrium is going to focus on uh, ions in solution and how we look specifically at the relationship between equilibrium in um, a solution and uh, the ways that we can calculate that. So um, for now, we're just going to have a quick introduction, try and use what we already know about the equilibrium constant and make sure that we've got a really good picture about what's happening when ions are dissolving in solution. In the last video, we talked about the process uh, or at least the technique of colorimetry. Um, I very briefly overviewed it and uh, you hopefully will get an opportunity to use colorimeters in class and to actually have a look at the process of setting up a calibration curve and calculating unknown concentrations. But in order for us to do that, we need to be really clear about what's going on when we throw a crystal of an ionic solid into uh, a beaker of water. So we know that there is an ordered structure, uh, an ordered arrangement based on uh, an ionic network or array, uh, which includes the ions that are present. So in the example that I've got here, I have chloride ions and I have uh, sodium ions. And you can see um, just a diagrammatic representation of the difference in both the size and also the fact that the distribution is very even. Uh, the ratio of sodium to chloride ions is one to one. And you can see each individual sodium ion is surrounded by uh, chloride ions in all, uh, in all three dimensions. Now, of course, um, as we get to the edge of a crystal, we are going to find that um, there are some ions there that don't have, um, uh, aren't completely surrounded. And of course, they're the ones that the water molecules can interact with. A water molecule is a bent molecule, and it's a bent molecule that has polarity. And the polarity comes through the difference in electronegativity between the hydrogen and the oxygen atoms. And therefore, the bond that forms between um, those two atoms is a polar covalent bond. The higher electronegativity of the oxygen atoms draws the electrons a little closer. And so without actually becoming ionized, it becomes slightly charged, slightly negatively charged and the hydrogens therefore become slightly positive char positively charged. Because we have a, um, a polarity, we have a positive region and a negative region in this uh, molecule, and therefore uh, it is going to attract or be attracted by other positive and negative charges. So you can see um, for a sodium atom, what will happen is all of the negative regions of the water molecules will be attracted to the sodium uh, atom, the cation, and will surround it. And likewise, you can see that the molecule has rotated, the water molecules have rotated so that the positive region of uh, hydrogen is close to the negative um, uh, anion of chlorine. So this is kind of a pictorial to, to set in your mind an idea of what's actually happening when we do put ionic solids into water and how that distribution of ions occurs as water molecules surround each of these individual ions and keep them from reforming uh, the solid. But of course, we know when the solution is saturated, that reformation, that reverse reaction is actually happening. So when we first put the crystal in, we start to form sodium ions and chloride ions as those ions dissociate from the solid. But as the concentration increases, some of them will come back the other way. Our equilibrium constant we know is pro concentration of products over concentration of reactants. And so in this case, we've got the concentration of the sodium ions multiplied by the concentration of the chloride ions and then divided by the concentration of the sodium chloride itself. Now, of course, as we've talked about in previous videos, the fact that the sodium chloride is a solid means this value here uh, is a constant. And because it is a constant, 
we can actually multiply a constant by a constant, remove them from the uh, equation, and we get our equilibrium constant being equal to the concentration of both the ions present. Now, this will change, of course, if instead of sodium chloride, I used, uh, say, magnesium chloride, which is MgCl2, then when I'm doing my ionization or dissociation reactions, I'm going to have uh, twice the concentration of the chloride ions, and therefore my equilibrium constant is going to be magnesium concentration multiplied by chloride ion concentration um, raised to the power of two. We will look at these in a lot more detail when we explore solubility products, but that will be in the final section of the equilibrium topic. Thanks for watching.